watching that video said amen happy mother's day and welcome to vintage church if i haven't had the pleasure of meeting you my name is christy hagens and i serve as our vintage women's coordinator if you're new to vintage church would you like or comment let us know on this video or text vip to the number on the screen because we want to connect with you another way that we can all stay connected is to our virtual v groups for more information about that, you can check out vcnola.com slash vgroups. As I already mentioned, today is Mother's Day and holidays like this can bring up complicated emotions for us. And Mother's Day during quarantine is complicated. So whatever the circumstances are, we wanna take a moment and just honor all of the moms, all of the women who have served as motherly figures in our lives. And one of the ways that we're doing that today is Pastor Dustin and his wife, Rachel, have prepared a special message from God's word. So again, we're so thankful that you're here. Let's worship Jesus together. Well, good morning, Vintage Church. How y'all doing? 
I said, how y'all doing? Come on, talk back to me. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we are so excited that you are joining us this morning. Uh, we want you to feel comfortable, feel welcome, feel free to just be where you are and worship with us. So make sure you tag your friends, your family, and make sure you like and, and tag and love and all the other good stuff at the bottom of the screen. Listen, one thing we do is that the Lord, he exchanges the old for new. He takes our sin. He takes our soul, he takes our hearts, and he mends it again for his glory, for, for, for our good. Amen. So listen, we want to sing this song together. Feel free to sing with us. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all know it. Come on.
Hey everyone, happy Mother's Day and welcome again to Vintage Church. If I've never met you before, my name is Dustin Turner and I serve as the lead pastor of Vintage Church. And what I'm really excited about today is my special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey y'all, I'm Rachel and I've been married to Dustin for going on 13 years now. And we have two beautiful children, Gabriel, who is almost nine and Emmeline, who is almost six. Today, our desire is to encourage you. Uh, there's so much going on in our world, whether it's coronavirus related or not. And more than anything, I think what we need right now is to be encouraged. And so moms and ladies today, I hope that this message encourages you more than anything. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 1. And uh, Joshua is not typically a book you would go to on Mother's Day. But that's where we wanted to go uh, and share, hopefully, an encouraging message with you. Joshua 1, verses 6 through 9. Here is what the Lord tells Joshua. He says this, Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse 7, Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do According to all the law that, the, that Moses, my servant, commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so really what we wanted to encourage you with today is that encouragement that the Lord tells Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous be strong and courageous. And so here's what I want to kind of lay out for you today. We need to be strong and courageous because, and here are three things that Rachel and I see in this text that we want to share with you today. Number one, be strong and courageous because God has given you his purpose. Look at verse six again. In verse six, be strong and courageous. Why? And this is what he tells Joshua. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. What I want you to see here is the reason that God is telling Joshua to be strong and courageous is because God has given him a purpose. God has told Joshua, Joshua, you are to go in. You are to take the people of Israel into the promised land. And don't forget everything that's happened before this. Israel is enslaved in Egypt and God hears them, calls Moses, tells Moses to go back to Egypt, delivers the people of Israel out of captivity. Then they were supposed to go into the promised land, yet they rebel, and then they walk around the wilderness for 40 years. And now they're here on the edge of the land getting ready to take it, and it's Joshua's purpose to bring them into the promised land. I often think about it like this. God's calling and purpose for us is like our job description, right? At Vintage, as the lead pastor of Vintage, I lead our 
team of leaders. And one of the worst things that I could do is hire somebody, but then not give them a job description. Why? Because then they have absolutely no idea what to do, right? One of the things that Rachel and I all the time in premarital counseling talk about is having clear expectations and, and living out God's purpose that Joshua is doing here. The reason he's able to do that is because God has made his purpose. He's made his expectations for Joshua extremely clear. This is what you are to do. This is true for moms. This is true for women. This is true for anybody. One of the things that's so difficult for us is to wrap our mind around what in the world God could be calling us to. What is our purpose in life? And I want to give you some just basic definitions um, that I think will help you as you think about your purpose. And you will think about being strong and courageous because of your purpose. One, and this is a reminder for all of us, every single one of us have a general calling in life. And the general calling in life is to love God and love people. Jesus himself summarizes all of the commandments with those two things. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And so all of us uh, need to be careful to not walk away from that or make things too complicated. That's part of what we have been called to do. But at the same time, we've also been tasked with a missional calling. And so let me give you this definition from a book called Calling and Clarity. He defines the missional calling like this. It's the main contribution that your life makes to God's kingdom. You could think of it as the mission statement of your life. It refers to the distinctive direction in which you aim to spend the bulk of your time, gifts, and energy. And so that's what I really want you to think about as a, as a wife, as a mother, as a woman, as a just human being. Think about the mission statement that God has put on your heart and put on your life. Think about what he is calling you to. What's the purpose that he's given you that you are to live out in your life. Thank you, Father. We surrender, Jesus. We surrender it all, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to lift up and worship. Sing this out. Higher than the mountains that I Stronger than the power of the grave, the constant in the trial and the chain. This one thing remain. This one thing remains. You know it. Let's sing it out.
God has not only given you his purpose, but also we can be strong and courageous because God has given you his word. Right in the middle of verses six and nine, we find verses seven and eight that talk about this. Let me read those again to you. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. That is God's word. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law, God's word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. And so again, think about the context. When the people of Israel are in the wilderness, one of the things that happens is they are at Mount Sinai and the Lord comes down and delivers not only the Ten Commandments, but he delivers all of the rules and all of the laws that the people of Israel were to live by. And so the people of Israel were not walking blindly. They knew who God was and they knew how he wanted them to live their lives. And so listen, this is what's so important. The reason God gave them his word was because they were going into a different world that they had never been in, surrounded by people who didn't follow God. And what God wanted the people of Israel to know is, again, who he is and how they were to live for him. I mean, I think about it like this. Recently, when we've moved into our new house, we bought a storage shed for our backyard, and unbeknownst to me, the storage shed uh, did not have the manual in the box. And so immediately I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how to put this thing together and I don't know what's next. Thankfully, we have the internet, right? I was able to get on the internet, find the directions, but just imagine if I had all of this stuff to do and no direction in how to do it. I would, I would be walking around aimlessly because I wouldn't know what to do. God's law gives us direction. When we put God's word in our heart, we're able to live our lives according to the way that he wants us to live it. One of the things that we've talked about related to God's word is the influence of your mom. Your mom was really a very special person to you and influenced you in a really big way. And so a question that I have for you is, Tell us about the influence of your mom on your own life and particularly her focus on God's word. Uh, last year when I was home uh, visiting my dad, I found an old journal entry of hers um, where it was right when she found out she was pregnant with my sister. And, um, you know, she was really praying to God um, in this journal entry and she was talking about the fact that this baby 
deserved to know who Jesus was. And so she was kind of like recommitting herself back to God and being in the church. And so that decision she made all those years ago led us, like my sister and I, to be raised in the in the church. And she, my mom, was a huge spiritual influence on my life. And I can remember she had her place in the house. She had this chair in the living room. And... Um, her her Bible was there, her highlighter, her journal, her portable CD player um, where she listened to worship music. Um, and anytime she was in her chair, she was reading God's word and she was letting it fill her life up so that she could pour it out into her daughters. And I will never forget, forget that um, and how... It was so important to her and it was so real. And I knew how real her faith was because I constantly was catching her in it. Um, It was real to her because she was living it out. It helps me to reflect on my life and what my kids are seeing um, from me. Am I a lover of God's word? And am I letting it fill me up daily to be able to then pour it into their lives. Not 
fear. No, 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 no. Give my heart in place, my safe refuge. you my treasure. I think it's we're encouraged by the Lord to be strong and courageous when we prioritize his word, when we fill our hearts and we fill our lives with his word because he's given us his word. The last thing that I want you to see is we can be strong and courageous not only because God has given us his purpose, not only because he's given us his word, but because God has given us his presence. Look at verse 9 at the very end of this, these few verses. God says this to Joshua for the third time. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. And then he says this. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We literally just finished the series, Where Are You? That entire series was about the presence of God. And that's exactly what God is getting at here. That It doesn't matter where Joshua goes. And listen, this is true for you and I. It doesn't matter where we go. God's presence is with us. And I want you to think about, again, that context. The people of Israel were slaves, and then they wandered the desert for 40 years. God was telling them to go into a land that they had never been to and fight a war that they had never fought. Don't forget, these were not warriors. These were not soldiers. And Joshua had never led people before. And so what God is getting at is, listen, you can have strength, you can have courage because, not because of your abilities, not because of your experience, but because of my presence. Every time I think about God's presence, I think about our kids. Rachel mentioned uh, Gabe and Emily uh, at the very beginning, right? And one of the things about my kids is they're, they're, they're eight and they're five. If they go into a place where they've never been before and they go thinking they're by themselves, they're fearful, they're, they're scared, right? Because they don't know what to expect. But when mom and dad are with them, it's a totally different story because our presence is with them. And all of a sudden, even though they might still be fearful, they still might have concerns, they trust us and they know our presence is there and they're comforted by that. What God is getting to Joshua here is that very same truth, that when we have the presence of God, we can be strong and courageous regardless of what comes, regardless of what happens. And so be reminded of that. Don't forget that you have the presence of God and therefore you can be 
strong and courageous. I've got a couple questions again for Rachel. Thinking about God's presence, how has God's presence in your own life given you strength and courage? Living this life is hard and being a mom is difficult and having the presence of God has given me the strength in those dark places in my life to keep pushing forward. And I also feel like it has given me the courage to um, share my story with other women and where I have failed, but also where God has given me grace in those moments at the same time. So I think one question that a lot, not just women, but a lot Mm -hmm. of people ask is, what do you do if you don't feel God's presence? Mm -hmm. I can totally relate to that um, because Mother's Day is not really my favorite day of the year. (laughs) And that's just simply because my mom is not here anymore. And, um, you know, back in 2017, uh, we lost her to suicide. And so that has been one of the most challenging things in my life. And God's presence really felt non-existent, really, um, in that time. And I just know for myself how important it was to have um, like good Christian community around me because like having Dustin and having my friends and church family, um, you know, pushed me in the times when I needed to be pushed, um, but also love me and like surround me with truth and encouragement. I feel like now I'm at a place where God's presence feels closer to me now than it did even, I would say, even a year ago. So my encouragement to you is just no matter where you are um, right now, um, to just press into Jesus. Pray to him, even if you're, even if it's angry, like God can handle your anger. Um, you know, reading your Bible and attending a church service, which I know right now is online, but, you know, to be committed to doing that and to be filled up on a Sunday morning to, you know, attend your your V group, um, have your friends, have your people praying for you and lifting you up um, and encouraging you. Doing all of those things, it takes time, but eventually I know for me, God's presence started to feel closer and I could feel him drawing me in to him. Babe, thanks so much for sharing all of that. I think uh, there are probably some people in our church that are thankful to hear from you today and probably want to hear from you again. Rachel and I really do. Uh, We want to encourage you today. Uh, I hope that Joshua 1 has been an encouragement to you. The most important thing that I want you to be reminded of today is to be strong and courageous. Ladies, be strong and courageous. This Mother's Day, be encouraged to be strong and courageous. And listen, you're not going to be strong and courageous because you're smart, because you're gifted, because you're popular, because you're beautiful. Nothing within yourself is going to allow you to be strong and courageous. Why could Joshua be strong and courageous? Why can we be strong and courageous? Because of the Lord, because of God's purpose, because of God's word, and because of God's presence. So this week, be strong and be courageous. I want to close with just a question for you to think about this week. How can you lean into the Lord this week and be strong and courageous? I don't know what you're going through. I don't know why you might need strength and courage, but I know that you do. And so how can you lean into the Lord this week to be strong and courageous? Now, here's what I want to do. I want to close a little differently today on Mother's Day. In just a moment, I want to pray for all of our moms, for all of our spiritual moms, for all of the women of our church. But I want to encourage you right where you're at to take a moment 
and pray for maybe the moms in your house or for the women in your life or if your mom or your grandmother or your spiritual mom is in another state or wherever, I want you to pause and I want you to take a moment to pray for these women. Ask the Lord to make them strong and courageous. So take a moment and pray and I'll close us in prayer. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, God, for your purpose. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your presence. That it's because of you and those things that you give to us that we can be strong and courageous. And in this moment, Father, I want to lift up all of the moms, all of the spiritual moms, all of the women of our church. And God, I pray that this week you would make them strong and courageous. I don't know what they're experiencing. I don't know what they're going through, God. But I pray that they would find strength and courage in you. That you would remind them of your purpose for them. That you would remind them of their word, of your word. And God, that you would remind them of your presence this week. And so, Father God, thank you for the women in our lives. God, may you bless them, may you encourage them, and may you strengthen them. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
this morning, this is our prayer to you. That God, when you lead us, God, we will follow. The bridge of that last song that we sang says, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And this is a prayer for an increased amount of faith when we don't know what is going on and we feel like we're in an impossible situation, like what we're in right now. There are many ways that we can continue to respond faithfully. One of those ways is through our giving. At Venice Church, we have several ways that you can give today or throughout the week. We believe that your generosity is truly changing lives. Another way that we can respond is by loving our neighbor. Venice Church has partnered with Second Harvest Food Bank to collect non-perishable canned food items. We have a collection site in the back of our campus, and you can continue to drop off your food items all this week until next Sunday. You can check out servenola.com for more information. As a reminder, would you take some time to honor all the moms and motherly figures in your life? Let them know how much you care for them, appreciate them, and thank God for them. As we enter into a new week, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And may God empower us to live the gospel, serve the city, and be the church. God bless you. Have a great week.